Hello everyone, today we'll be doing a Stripe checkout tutorial using Python and the Stripe API. This will help you create some, what's it called? This will help you, you know, allow customers to pay with their credit cards for your stuff. So a use case would be e-commerce or something. I'm a bit sick, so I might sound a bit different. And uh, actually I actually had to write a script for it. And this is my second time recording this video. The video will just be a demo demonstrating how I got this. So we'll just get started then. The prerequisites are that you can, you can create a Stripe account or you already have a Stripe account. You know Python or can at least convert the abstract ideas in Python to a language of your choice. And uh, you also need to know how to use pip or you know install third party libraries and if you are programming in python it would be pretty wise if you knew a backend from framework or micro framework or web framework one of those things i use flask but some other ones are django with a d or bottle there might be more prerequisites but that's all i could think of for now the first thing we'll need to do is set up Stripe, and uh, once you go, once you log in, go to Payments and click Rules. You'll see that I have some additional two rules, because basically with credit cards there are two things that you can worry about, which is fraud and risk. And uh, for us, it's mostly to prevent fraud. An easy way to do it is to just say block of the postal verification fails because we don't need to let Stripe let their AI do it. We'll just do it manually. Like, we'll block that. We can just set that rule up. They have it disabled by default, but you want to enable it because if someone stole our credit card, we wouldn't want merchants to just say, oh, they got the postal code wrong. Who cares? No, I'd want that to be a verification so that I don't get money stolen from me. CVC verification fails. Now, this would happen if, you know, someone literally got a picture of their credit card taken, like the front of it, and they tried to use it and they just put in a random CVC and it works. Like what? No, that's so weird. So these two rules should be enabled. Also do it in test mode. So I have it in test mode, but if you take it off, it should it's right there as well. And going back, let's go to developers and click API keys. Now, we'll see that there's a publishable key and a secret key. We need the secret key. And uh, copy the test key. You'll need to create a secret key in the live setting. You create one, you don't click reveal, you just click test data, and then click reveal test key. The live key is for a production server, which, and your, the, the machine you code on is not a production server, or usually not a production server. So you don't, you really, you rarely need this. You only need this when you're setting the environment variables for your production server. I use DigitalOcean, so I'd be doing that in the DigitalOcean UI. But anyways, click test mode, copy this key, and we'll go into some code right now. You can see that I was actually, in the last video, I decided to record myself implement, implementing this abstract concept, and uh, yeah, I said, nope, it is not a simple task, so I'm not going to record myself doing it again. But anyways, here's the .env file example. You basically only need to set Stripe API key for yourself or an optionally Flask end. Then uh, I, this isn't my actual dot end because my dot end is over here. And uh, yeah, this is not, this is just an example for you. In our actual demo now, we can see what I did, or I'll explain what I did. We can. This is a demo on what I did to get the checkout. And how you can use this is you can implement it in however you designed your e-commerce site. I designed my site in a specific way and I doubt 
everyone is designing their website that way because I looked at some examples and uh, yeah, I don't really like how other people do it, but I'll share how I do it later. But yeah, I, I this is all you need. And then you just modify it or you, ins you put it into something on how you do it. And you know, uh, you can just do that. This is the most important part, which will save you time on how to, how to actually process the card. Import time, you know, all these things. Most of these things are not necessary for your server, just necessary to run the demo. First thing we want to do is load the .n file. And you'll notice a couple things. One, I don't care if the file does not exist because if that's the case, then we're probably running in production. Then we want to open the .n file in reading mode and the encoding is going to be set to UTF-8 because on Windows, the default encoding is not UTF-8. I mean, in Python on Windows, the default encoding is not UTF-8, even though Notepad is UTF-8. And then we got this complicated iter, which is basically saying, read the next line of .n file until we get to an empty string. And then, so the last line is not going to be an empty string, so we don't have to deal with that problem either. Then we just set the Stripes API key and we see this weird ternary, which is basically saying that in your, when you're implementing this, you want to make sure that these re redirect URLs are different or are respective to if you're developing on your machine or if you're developing on production. So if you're deploying on production, you're not going to be want the redirect URL is not a localhost URL. This is IPv6, by the way. It's going to be your domain. So that's what that's there for. Just a reminder. Now we actually get to our Stripe checkout. This is the API. The important things are the success of redirect URL and the cancel redirect URL. How checkouts work is that you tell Stripe you want to you know, you want the customer to pay for some things using a credit card. Stripe says, yeah, I will broker that deal. So that means that you don't actually get to, to touch those credit card numbers because they're licensed to do it. They're PCI compliant and you don't have to be PCI compliant to use them. So they broker that environment. The customer goes on that link, which is, you know, indirectly tied to you and that develops improves trust with the user they don't have to worry about you stealing their card information or your card your or their information leaking because of you because they it's stripe's fault it, stripe would take responsibility so that also alleviates some uh, from some pain from your side some legal issues from your side the success is based on if the user paid for something like if they're if the payment process went through, cancel means that the user pressed the back button. If you, so if I press this, it go it cancels. Okay, and if it, if I you know fill in the information correctly, it'll go to a normal URL. Now for the most sophisticated nested structure, which is line items. It's a list of items, and just to get one item, you need all this information. You need price data, which is a currency, and then the product data for that price. It's just a bunch of, you know, sophistication. But one thing to note is that unit amount is in the smallest denomination for the currency. So for US dollars or Canadian dollars, it would be one cent. So that would mean that 2,000 is 2,000 cents, which is $20. If we said the currency was the Japanese yen, 2,000 here would mean 2,000 Japanese yen because there are no, the smallest denomination is one yen. Then we have mode, which is payment, customer email. I have set it to none and that works. It just turns out to be empty. So if you don't collect customer email in the checkout, then you don't have it here, but it gets collected anyways when Stripe 
or yeah, extract because extract want to do it. You can set an expiry date, which is useful because maybe you don't want someone to be paying for your order and then the order item not <laughs> being available two hours or three hours later. So I set it to one hour, but it could even be put to 30 minutes or even 20 minutes because it's credit card, it's not Monero. I recently, actually a couple days ago, I supported Monero. That required background process, like background monitoring and everything, which is just another deal altogether. I'm not gonna elaborate on that further. But anyways, if we run this, we when we create this, we get a session object, and I'll scroll through this slowly. And the important fields are URL, because this is the checkout URL, and status. This is payment status. So payment status is also important. Status is important as well. And ID, which is how we retrieve the session after. So I'll do two things actually. Payment status. So we will restart this and we will click enter and the web browser module opens this up. We say a at gmail.com. I am going to save myself some time. And we say credit card information. We have some test cards over here, so I'm just gonna use them. 1224, 111, name of card doesn't matter, postcode doesn't matter. We click pay, we get redirected to the good URL. And let's see what our let's see what we get for this session. So we see that the stat the session status is complete and that the user has paid for everything. And yeah, that's basically what happened. Now we'll go over some other things that could happen or what happens if it's something else. So if the, what does Stripe do in these situations? So what if the zip fails? And uh, we can test that out here as, long, as soon as I get this working. 1224, 111. And the zip should fail. And as we can see, Stripe has taken care of it for us. What can happen though is that even in all these situations, Stripe can Stripe can say this that oh, your card did not work, and the user's not getting redirected. But if they someone's trying to break your site, they're gonna say they already know what the redirect URL is. So they could, or they could potentially know what it is. So they could go to your redirect site, but basically when you get redirected to the success, you can't assume that the order has been paid for, even if, so when you, so in your server, when you get this request, you have to also retrieve the session like I did before and I actually check for both payment status and status. So status has to be complete and payment status has to be uh, has to be paid. But yeah, only because I'm on the safe side because there is Yeah, see you can use this value to decide when to fulfill your customer's order. So you don't actually have to care about the status, only the payment status. You can use status to depend on how you want to treat the customer because if the status is complete that means that their redirect or whatever was like that means that whatever they did it was from stripe and then you can just use payment status either way so yeah i think that is all you can see some i'll put some urls in the description but that's basically it and uh, yeah i'll see you guys in the next one